What is going on, everybody? This is Dr. Weefer. I want to talk to you guys about the Auger Diffusion Lab for your AP Bio class. This is a really cool phenomena in this lab, and it's going to help answer the question, why are cells so small? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up the lab, then I'm going to show you some sample data in case you missed the lab for whatever reason, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a couple of the main conclusions, yet I'm going to leave some of the details out of the end for your specific lab write-up. And here it goes. So the first thing I really want to show you is I want to show you this really cool chemical. It's called phenolphthalein. Look that up and figure out how to spell that if you're interested. So phenolphthalein is going to be a clear chemical. It's a liquid. And when you add a base to it, it is going to turn pink. That's right. It's a pH indicator. So in this case, I added a little sodium hydroxide to the clear phenolphthalein. It turned it pink. But I want you to check out what happens when I add a little vinegar right here. So when we added vinegar, which is an acid, watch what happens to the phenolphthalein. Boom. And there it is. It's actually neutralizing it. It is bringing down the pH and it is turning back to the clear color. So what I want you to do next is check out these agar blocks. Agar is a material that is kind of like gelatin or jello that when you heat it up and dissolve it in a liquid, it is going to um, become part of the solution. And then after you pour it, it actually is going to cause the liquid it dissolves in to solidify, just like jello or gelatin. So as shown here, this is going to be um, agar, but also there's going to be phenolphthalein with the sodium hydroxide in the agar. And what you can do in the lab is you can cut it into these really cool blocks. In the case of the lab uh, that, that I set up for you, it is going to be two and a half centimeters long, two and a half centimeters wide, and two and a half centimeters in height or depth. So this way we can easily calculate the volume and the surface area. So what you should do is um, when you do the lab, you want two of these. One you're going to keep the same and the other one you're going to chop up into eight pieces. The way that we chop up eight pieces is you can make a cross on top and then slice it thick uh, wide. So what's going to happen is instead of 2.5 centimeters long, it's going to be 1.25 centimeters long, 1.25 centimeters high, and 1.25 centimeters um, wide. So this way it's going to be a total of eight blocks, but if you add up the volume for both of these, okay, it's actually going to be the same. So when you calculate the surface area, the surface area, just as a review, is you take the surface area of each side, it's uh, length times width, and that's the surface area of the side, and because it is six sides, you got to times it by six to get the volume, length times width times height or side cubed. On over here, this is the, uh, so this is one sample. The second sample that I want you to consider is all of these blocks together as one. So the volume for all the blocks is length times width times height of each one times eight. You're going to find that it's the same volume, it's the same material, you should get the same number as, he, as on the left. The surface area is going to change, however. It is going to be the side of the length times the width, and that's going to give you the surface area of one side, but what's going to happen, it is going to be um, times six. Then, after we times it by six, it, we need to times that by the eight cubes, so you're definitely going to get a different surface area. Finally, what you have to do is you have to calculate the surface area to volume ratio. Uh, so the do that, you're going to take the surface area number, you're going to divide it by the volume. When you divide those numbers, you're going to get an actual number. That is going to be the number that represents the ratio. So when you get this, I want you to observe that the large block has a, a specific surface area to volume ratio, and all of the small blocks have a different surface area to volume ratio. And we will get to that at the end. So when we put it in the vinegar, we want to time how long it is going to take for the vinegar to penetrate into the agar. How are we going to know that? Well, just like before, we saw that the uh, vinegar neutralized the uh, the sodium hydroxide and it turned it from pink to clear. We are going to look to see how far the clear coloring goes in. All right, so we put it in the blocks. After five minutes, we could all actually see the clear coloring. 
already starting to appear, most pronounced in these uh, in the block that's cut up into the small pieces right here. Don't forget these were the same size block. We just cut this up into eight smaller pieces, okay? And then after 10 minutes goes by, it is really pronounced in the small ones, and we start to see it in, this lar in the large block that's uncut. Uh, after 15 minutes, we can see that it's even more pronounced. So it almost looks like... Um, it almost looks like a little box within a box. It's kind of cool looking. In, in real life, without looking at the picture, it's even better. And after 20 minutes, this is uh, pretty much gone. So after 20 minutes, you can count this as completely gone, uh, pretty much in all of the um, cut, in the cut agar. But look how much is still left. You could actually... Um, see how much is left there. And what's gonna happen is after 25 minutes, it's really starting to disappear, but you can still see in the large one, it's still in the center there in, without the picture in real life is even more pronounced. And then after 30 minutes, uh, it is completely gone also from the larger one. So if you wanna record the data, it's 30 minutes for the uncut block and it was about 20 minutes, 20, 20 to 25 minutes for the for the smaller, uh, the the block cut up into small pieces. All right. So uh, why did it take faster for uh, the diffusion to occur in the block cut up into small pieces? Well, uh, one of the main ideas of why cells are so small is to increase the surface area to volume ratio. So that's what that's when you take the surface area divided by volume. So both of these have the same cell amount of cellular content. So if you would imagine these as cells, the amount of cytoplasm that in includes the chemical reactions, it includes the all the activities uh, is inside here. So same amount of material. However, um, oxygen needs to come in. Car uh, carbon dioxide needs to leave, nutrients need to come in, stuff needs to diffuse back and forth. Ask yourself the question, when is it actually more efficient? When is it going to be diffusing at a faster rate? After you answer that question, you could then begin to um, th really think about how efficient a small object is at exchanging material by diffusion. It actually goes at a faster rate. So uh, there are other ways that cells can increase the surface area. One is that it can divide to get smaller, also change its shape. So what kind of shapes do you think or can you come up with that can increase the surface area keeping the volume the same? Even if you take the small one small block, block individually, once, right, and calculate the surface area volume ratio of the, just one of the small pieces, it actually is still much larger than the, lar the large block. So you should do that also um, when, when you're working with these numbers. So I hope that helped, and I hope that you um, understand the lab, and I shall talk to you guys next time.